Wi-Fi and other low-frequency EMFs are hazardous to human health. There are many, many high-quality studies proving this. And as big telecom gets ready to roll out 5G on a national level, the likelihood is that the hazardous impacts of EMFs are only going to increase with millimeter wave technology at the level of 5G and beyond. Today's video is here to show you the mechanism behind the danger of Wi-Fi at 2.4 gigs and help you understand that if this is happening at 2.4 gigs, what's going to happen at 5Gs? And also, from a, from a counterstatement perspective, telecom companies would say, well, the Wi-Fi or your cell phone is not having a thermal impact, meaning it's not heating up and heating tissue, so you're safe. But the studies just show that isn't true. The non-thermal effects of Wi-Fi are very damaging without heat, is what non-thermal means. So let's dive into the research today to see how the Wi-Fi in the 2.4G is hurting us and what we can do about it even when 5G is rolled out. I'm Dr. John Bartimus, and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. Wi-Fi is damaging to human health. And if you'd like to dive into the research yourself, Martin Paul is a PhD researcher that has done a lot of legwork in this area. Now, what I wanna do is synthesize his findings to help you understand how your health could be suffering from Wi-Fi and other EMF exposure. Some of the key areas that have piles of research behind them include Wi-Fi drives up oxidative stress, and oxidative stress can damage DNA, promoting cancer. Wi-Fi promotes infertility on both the male and female side, and we'll dive into that. Wi-Fi promotes neuropsychiatric symptoms like anxiety, depression, etc. Because of the mechanisms we'll describe, it can interfere with the release of every single neurotransmitter could be behind your insomnia as well. And then Wi-Fi can drive fatigue and drive hormone imbalances as we'll get into. So let's dive in. And if you're suffering from any of these symptoms, Wi-Fi and EMF exposure may be a cause that you've never considered because in the day-to-day -day routine, nobody's talking about it, but we are exposed ubiquitously. Every coffee shop has Wi-Fi every library, every restaurant, every store you're going into just about right now has Wi-Fi. Your cell phone's always in your pocket. You go home and your router's plugged in. So you are being bathed in this, and if everything else you've tried is not if impacting your symptoms or your chronic issues, perhaps it's Wi-Fi or EMFs, and you're in a, a, a sensitive individual there. So. How could it be impacting you? I think it's important for you to understand mechanisms because if you understand why something's happening to you, you're more likely to implement changes that may not be comfortable at first, but you understand why you're doing it and why it could be benefiting you, you'll be more successful that way. So let's start. First, Wi-Fi and other low frequency EMFs are hazards to human health. We've repeated that already quite a few times. And remember the studies we're citing we're looking at 2.4 G's, okay? So 5G is, is about to roll out nationally and worldwide. The SpaceX program has been approved. Elon Musk is, has a goal of sending 40,000 low-flying satellites into the atmosphere that will link to 1 million antenna on the ground in the United States so that you won't be able to go anywhere without being bathed in 5G. So if 2.4 G is doing what I'm about to show you, what is 5G do, gonna do? We don't know because there's not a ton of studies. They like to roll out technology and then retrospectively look at what happened to the population, us, the guinea pigs. So here's what we know about 2.4G. 2.4G or Wi-Fi causes these pathophysiologic changes by activating what are called voltage-gated calcium channels. And voltage-gated calcium channels are on almost all tissues in your body. And what happens is 
They're voltage gated, meaning they're electrically triggered to allow calcium inside the cell. Once calcium is inside the cell, it's signaling things inside the cell for proteins to fold or um, in the proteins to have enzymatic functions. They impact the, the calcium impacts the mitochondria. It does all kinds of things. So we have voltage gated, gated calcium channel activation by the Wi-Fi. And then that leads to an increase in intracellular calcium. And that increase in intracellular calcium leads to the damaging effects downstream. So one of the first ways it does it from an energy perspective and from a steroid hormone perspective, so your sex hormones, your testosterone, your estrogen, your progesterone, research has found that EMF exposure can lower those sex hormones. So if you're having perimenopausal symptoms, if you're having infertility symptoms, if a guy's having low T symptoms, maybe it's EMF exposure. And the nitric oxide produced by the increase in intracellular calcium because the nitric oxide can block mitochondrial energy formation. So you may feel fatigued and it can also block steroid hormone production. So maybe you have those sex hormone symptoms or thyroid symptoms or cortisol symptoms, adrenal symptoms. That's one mechanism. The calcium will also lead to, like we said, calcium signaling inside the cell in various mechanisms. And we'll get back to that. The, the increased calcium will lead to increased superoxide radical. And superoxide is a free radical that we'll discuss in a moment. And when superoxide combines with nitric oxide, you get peroxynitrite, which is also abbreviated O oh no. So if we have EMF exposure, one way to remember it is too much EMF, EMF exposure, too much calcium in the cell. No, we don't want that. Oh no. The no, oh no reaction. The no fatigue hormone, sex hormone issues. The oh no, all the things you're about to see downstream. So first, the peroxynitrite leads to free radicals. And free radicals you might have heard of, um, if, you, if you like the health literature or blogs, you've heard of antioxidants. We take antioxidants to squash the free radical levels or pro-oxidants. So if you think of oxidation, oxidation, if you leave a steel bumper outside in the weather too long, it oxidizes and becomes rusty. So you could think of free radicals as driving rust in your body. We take antioxidants to try and uh, you know, inhibit that rust, or that's our rust be gone sort of supplement. So those free radicals drive oxidative stress, and that oxidative stress drives increases in NF-kappa B or inflammation. And inflammation fundamentally is a building block for all chronic disease. So EMFs increase inflammation and rust. The calcium signaling and the peroxynitrite, free radicals, oxidative stress, NF-kappa B and inflammation all lead to the pathophysiological responses that occur on an individual level. So the, the damage to our health. Now obviously EMFs don't cause infertility in every single person. EMFs don't cause fatigue in every single person or sex hormone dysfunction in every single person, but they could, and it does in some people, I'm sorry, it doesn't happen in every person, but the, the possibility is there for every person. It won't happen in every person, but it could happen in some people and does, the research shows it. So what happens in you is gonna vary from your spouse and from me, but these are things that the research has shown and we've known from an infertility standpoint and a male hormone testosterone sperm quality standpoint for 47 years. Since 1971, the Navy did a study and found that EMFs were damaging sperm quality and testosterone levels in their soldiers. 
So this is not, some of this is not new information, but they've still been allowed to roll it out and use us as guinea pigs. So the pathophysiology, the possible things that could happen. Again, isn't going to happen in everybody, but if you're suffering with these symptoms, perhaps the EMFs matter in your case and reducing your exposure could help you. Like I said earlier, DNA damage, EMFs and Wi-Fi damage DNA, and one way to cause cancer is to damage DNA and drive mutations, okay? Infertility, like I said, it can happen in either males or females. And what's important is the voltage-gated calcium channel activation and the increased calcium are key to prevent what's called polyspermy. And what polyspermy is, is, is when multiple sperm fertilize the egg at the same time. We don't want that but because that becomes lethal to the embryo. So to prevent the polyspermy, we want voltage-gated calcium activation and increased uh, calcium in the cell. So why are you saying, well, why is that bad? Well, if this happens before fertilization, you may not uh, prevent, if, excuse me, if fertilization has not occurred and this is happening, you may not prevent the polyspermy and then you could lose the embryo. So infertility there. Um, we also have risk of neuropsychiatric symptoms, lots of them, anxiety, depression, insomnia. They've even shown EEG changes, so the electrical um, mechanisms of the brain change due to EMF exposure. And the reason for that is because the voltage-gated calcium channel activation is key for every neurotransmitter in the brain. So if we are overstimulating that, we can have neurotransmitter imbalances and symptoms associated with that. And then we also have non-steroid hormone effects. So we saw up here that you could have steroid hormone impact. Sex hormones, progesterone, estrogen, testosterone have been shown to be lower. Non-steroid hormones are things like glucagon and insulin, things that regulate your blood sugar. What the studies show is that initially the exposure increases those hormones so you may have an increase in insulin and maybe drive insulin resistance, but over time you have a decrease in those hormones because of hormonal exhaustion, they call it. And the mechanisms aren't clearly known yet and what and, and, and how the hormone exhaustion manifests, but they know there's an initial spike and then a drop. And so that could be at role behind some blood sugar dysfunction, maybe type 1 diabetes, who knows. We'll find that out hopefully in the future. So this is the mechanism on a large page for you to understand how EMFs Wi-Fi at the 2.4 gig or G level right now are damaging the human health. And it's a sort of crystal ball for us for, you know, we can suspect how 5G may exacerbate this, but we can't come to any hard conclusions yet because the studies haven't been done. But what do we do about this, okay? If something is driving up oxidative stress, what do we want to do? We want to quench that oxidative stress, quench those free radicals. How do we do that? Antioxidants. What is the master antioxidant in your body? Glad you asked. Glutathione. So you want to make sure glutathione levels are sufficient and optimal. Uh, you want to also do things at home to lower your exposure. So if you're not using the internet, you're not using your computers, unplug your Wi-Fi router so you're not being bathed in it. Yes, your neighbor's houses are probably plugged in, so you may be feeling some of those, but control what you can control. Unplug yours. Your phone has four antenna uh, on it. The, the uh, location services, the Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi, and the data. If you're not using your phone, put it on airplane mode. If you're, if you're using your phone and it's not on airplane mode, don't keep it in your pocket. These studies are showing it damages, especially in men, especially in young men, damages sperm big time. I didn't mention it, but all of this is worse in younger versus adults. Younger are more susceptible to all this. Also, there's a dose-response relationship. The more accumulated exposure you have, the worse it is. 
and it's irreversible. So you want to limit your exposure. So airplane mode as much as you can. Unplug the router at home. If you're, if you're using the computer and you can hardwire, you can use an ethernet cord to your laptop, plug that in and shut off the Wi-Fi on your computer. So there's, there's things you can do there. And um, at night, definitely make sure router's unplugged. Unplug all electricity in the room you're sleeping in because at night when you're sleeping, that is when your body's recovering and healing. So you can help combat this oxidative stress and this inflammation at night by sleeping and healing. But if you're sleeping in an EMF covered environment, you're not getting that optimal healing that we want overnight. So then you start the day behind the eight ball. Um, I know it's a lot. The point of this is not to make you feel hopeless. The point of this is to educate you. So A, you can take action when 5G tries to come to your town and B, you can take action on an individualized level so that even if 5G comes and gets pushed through, well, here are strategies we can do to help protect ourselves the most. As always, your overall health matters. So your exercise matters, your sleep matters, like we said, your nutrition matters because nutrition provides whole food antioxidants for you. Uh, your mental state matters, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm Dr. John Bartimus. I work with people each and every day on their holistic health and taking into account factors like this. If you have chronic issues that you've suffered from that you can't find solutions to, perhaps this is part of your case, or perhaps there's other puzzle pieces that aren't being found by your current clinicians. I'd love to work with you. Reach out if you'd like to achieve a life at Optimal.